Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Blues Focus TV for a brand new series. What well, I'm going to call it signing series. I don't know what else to call it, so we'll go with that. But funnily enough, it was inspired by this man I'm joined by today. Elliot, how are you, mate? Uh, yeah, not bad. I'm looking forward to talking about uh, Ryan Woods today. Um, good player. Yeah, shame it didn't work out for us, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Lovely stuff. Good to hear. So, yeah, as, uh, as Elliot's just said, Basically, we're just going to be talking about uh, our latest recruits uh, in this series. And today is specifically for Ryan Woods. And that's why I'm speaking to Stoke fan Elliot, who um, does stuff with Bear Pit, um, if you've seen them before. And um, also has his own podcast called The Delilah Debate. Um, so I'll let him talk about more about that later on uh, before we wrap things up. Um, but yeah, now let's get straight into the video. So Ryan Woods, uh, first signing of the summer for Blues, quite a positive one. Um, 27 years old, so kind of coming into that prime age for a footballer. Um, so it's, it's exciting stuff and whether he can fit in this uh, Blues team will be interesting to see because I do think we need to refresh our spine. Um, so kind of touching on his style of play, what would you say Ryan Woods' style of play is, Elliot? I think he's just solid CDM to be honest he's not got anything flashy about him he can win the ball well he's got sort of a pretty decent vision as well he's a very very solid solid signing for you and solid in the defensive terms and solid in a, as a player as well he's always been very good for Stoke I reckon he never lets you down that's one of the things I notice about him he just doesn't let you down and I think when people say it hasn't really worked out for Stoke, I think Stoke were very much in a period of stage where there was bad lads in the club, in and around the club. Um, I mean, we don't have to really name names, but they've been like brandished about and people know who we're talking about. And Ryan Woods was not one of them. That's one of the things I'd say about him. He was not one of those sorts of type of people who give everything for the club. It was just a shame that there was those sort of people around him at the time where he felt that this wasn't maybe going elsewhere that he probably wanted it to I mean Blues have got an exciting project now with the Bowyer coming in Craig Gardner being the new director new owners have come in as well they've shown ambition so I think Ryan Woods has bought into that and thinks maybe we can sort of work with something here because he probably saw that a bit of stoke where maybe like most players saw it as a club to kind of get promoted to go to the Premier League didn't work out that way but I think Ryan Woods could see it as like a long-term project at Blues. So I think that'll be, that'll be probably be where his thoughts are at the moment. But in terms of style of play, ball winning CDM doesn't give up. I remember one time against Derby, we were, I was looking at videos last night for some reason. There was a video of doing <laughs> some highlights against Derby. And um, he, I remember this thing where he touched the ball down with his chest, flicked it over defender just lost it but then he got it back again and then we started to counter attack and he he does that a lot in my opinion um but yeah I th i'd just say it's a very very solid sign and i'd be very happy if i was a blues fan right now lovely stuff i mean that's great to hear i do feel like uh, we've missed a player like that for a while that's uh, defensively sound but also has that a kind of deep line playmaker ability and um, just a solid spine and a consistent player. And obviously he's shown that consistently, consistency last season on loan at Millwall, um, played virtually every game all season. So um, he's clearly a trusted player by managers. And uh, Rowett certainly seemed to like him if he wanted to bring him uh, over to Millwall following his spell at Stoke. So, um, yeah, it's always positive. And obviously Rowett's looked quite fondly at by Blues fans. So, um I'd love to put my trust in a player like that. And I'm certainly excited for him to uh, be a part of this new Blues team. And I, I think it will be straight into the fray, to be honest. I, I do think he'll become an instant starter, but we'll see. So I suppose moving on, uh, let's touch on about how he kind of did at Stoke. And let's cover that time um, that he spent over at the Bet365 Stadium. Um, let's talk about his debut first off. What did you kind of gather from him as a player when he debuted? Well, it was a disappointing start. I was actually at this game. It was a 2-0, def oh, no, 2-1 defeat to um, West Brom. Um, we always forget the other goal because it was in like, the 96th minute where you just know the game's sort of done and dusted. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, in your mind, it's 2-0, but it's actually 2-1. But, um, yeah, it wasn't a great start um, for him. Well, the team, per se, 
he got he was a substitute so he came on about probably about 25 minutes to go i reckon so we didn't get to see that much of what he could do but the thing that struck me instantly was the way he runs he runs like somebody would run if they went out in the snow barefoot just like close together <laughs> i mean if you if you've ever seen someone do that then you probably know what i'm talking about it's just legs are closed together it doesn't really do long strides but it, it works for him it you know doesn't really matter it works for raheem sterling he you know runs pretty weirdly but it's just his yeah, thing it really. works it and works yeah, exactly it works for him and that was one of the first things that struck me i went this guy runs a bit weirdly doesn't he and um, <laughs> but, um yeah to be honest i think the game it was either the game after i think sometime after that um we played Blackburn at home and we lost three two because we had a, such a bad start to our life early life in the championship yeah and i remember there was so we were three nil down just after just after the uh the break and we scored just out of nowhere there was a berahino goal so you know it that's was rare surprising enough yeah <laughs> so, um but i remember woods just played we nearly scored three goals in about a minute to like come back it was crazy but i remember woods was like dictating everything in that play he was like laying balls off to um the wingers who would then get crosses in and then that's how in scored his goal so he's not like somebody who would get a major amount of assists but like yeah you know do you know your mate at five aside who's like um yeah but i get the most assists for the assists He's kind of the, like the second he's, assist, yeah. Exactly. Kind of if you if you had a stat for that, I reckon Ryan Woods would be like a top player for that because he lays balls onto people who can then get assists. So in that play, he did that twice and we nearly scored twice in 30 seconds. He it was almost like a hoof pass for the um the when we nearly scored the third. And he just uh almost like he hoofed it. But then it was so calm and it was so sort of distributed well and it doesn't look like he really panics on the ball with that. And that was, well, it would have been a great moment. We all thought it went in because we all jumped up celebrating. And then we realised play was continuing and we thought, oh. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was a great moment as a fan. But in terms of Ryan Wood's performance, I thought he played really well. And um, what struck me most was when Jones, Nathan Jones, started this whole thing of we're going to get Stoke back into the top flight, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. Wood, we played a diamond formation where Woods was the holding midfielder and he played against Derby in a two-all draw. And I think, personally, it's one of the best defensive midfield displays I've seen since Stephen and Zonzi was at the, was at the club. He wasn't playing as well as him. He wasn't playing as well as him. But, you know, it was probably one of the best defensive midfield performances I've seen probably since we've been in the championship as well so you know he's definitely got that in him to do that and it, however blues play if he plays in that cdm holding role he can play in a one he can play in a probably a two as well i haven't seen him much in a two but as a one certainly if he's got two midfielders maybe just in front of him or a number 10 to work with so he can lay balls into him or even wingers to work with because you know like i said before with that move against blackburn he's got your wingers to get crosses in he is the man that kind of gets it out of defence and turns it into attack. That is probably Ryan Wood summed up in a nutshell. Yeah, I think that's a great assessment, very detailed. And um, I suppose kind of still staying on the subject of his time at Stoke, how did it kind of phase out for Ryan Woods in the end? How did it end? Where did it go wrong sort of thing? Well, Michael O'Neill came in and he obviously wants some changes at the club and... I think some people were on his wavelength and some people weren't on his wavelength. It wasn't to do with the fact that he's had an argument with the manager because Brown Woods just isn't that kind of bloke who would go yeah. in sulking. But I think it was more to do with the point that he just couldn't see him a sort of future there or like a long-term project there. He didn't really fit in into that mould. So I think he thought, I'll go to I'll go back with Gary Rowett, who was obviously the manager of Stoke at the time who brought him into the club. And that's probably where he was he's playing his best football under Rowett. I'll go under Gary Rowett for a bit. Probably, we all thought he was going to sign for Millwall permanently because he had his contract and I think he was pretty much at the end of his contract or he was so close. It was like a year left when he joined Blues and we all thought, okay, he'll go on loan to Millwall again and then he'll just sign permanently there because Rowett loved him. But worked out differently and he did play well under Millwall, I have to admit, but we all kind of knew, we've all kind of been preparing for the moment he permanently leaves for probably about two years now but 
you could tell that he's not a bad lad, but it just didn't really fit him with him at Stoke. O'Neill's made changes and, you know, there's other players in there. I think O'Neill was very keen to keep players like Etebo as well or Badu, but they just didn't want to stay. And I think that's, he got left on the bench a few times, played in O'Neill's first match, actually, 4-2 win against Barnsley. Uh, I think it was the first time he scored three in about eight or nine days or something. I, I remember that game, to be fair. You 89 them. games, yeah, that was it. It was um pretty crazy, but he played in there, did really well that game, but I just don't think he kind of saw his future at Stoke. And I think the Blues have got a long-term project. They've got the Bowyers and all that, and he fits into the, I think he can see something that's happening there that he could possibly get involved in. Yeah, I think that's uh, bang on, mate. And I hope it really does turn out that way because this, you know, I mean, we signed Chucks and EK yesterday and, um, you know, he said uh, that the positivity around the club is infectious and um, that's all, that's always great to hear as a fan because you, you want that to be your club. Um, so, no, I'm really excited and I, I look forward to hopefully Ryan Woods being a part of that. So uh, touching on more of his kind of playing style again, what's his work rate like? Oh, yeah, he gives you 100%. That's one of the main things about Ryan Woods. That's one of the first things you see in him. He's a grafter. He puts in work for the team. He he is a team player as well. He's not selfish. If he needs to do something he doesn't really want to do, he'll do it anyway for the team. He's definitely one of your manager's favourites to have in that side. He's, he's just really hard working, I'd say. And that's probably why it's such a shame it didn't work out from us though, because we build players around those sorts of people. We built Glenn Wheeling on that sort of style. We've built um, Ryan Shawcross was a grafter, different positions, but you know, these grafters we really sort of connect with. And I think that's why we've sort of held a little soft spot to Ryan Woods. Whereas other players, um, like I said, the ones with the bad attitudes, we don't really hold in high regard because it looked like they didn't, we, they weren't trying it looked like they weren't sort of giving enough effort for the team. It looked like they were only playing for themselves, whereas Ryan Woods looked like he was definitely wanting to play for Stoke. And even like at a point where he thought, oh, there's maybe not a future here, like I said, against Barnsley, he probably thought I could see my future elsewhere. He still put 110% effort in for the team. And I think that's the players you need to have around in your dressing room because he's a good, first, he's a good lad and he works very hard. And those two combined are just perfect for any team. Yeah, that and that's brilliant to hear. And that kind of brings me on <clears throat> to my next point, um, kind of off the pitch. What's, what sort of personality do you kind of, what, what do you interpret him to be like um, as a person on and off the pitch, I suppose? Well, yeah, I think he's, um, he's not on like a, uh, what's it? Um, he's not, he's private on Instagram. So I feel like he's sort of someone who's very close to his family, wants to keep football and family separate. I respect that, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, you do respect that. I mean, players like Joe Allen, for instance, aren't even on social media, and we respect that. But I think he's probably like a quiet lad off the pitch. Um, I don't know him personally, obviously. I'm not saying this as like his mate or anything, but from an outside perspective, I feel like he's probably a quiet lad. He's goes about his football and then just comes home, wants to maybe get away from it. I mean, we've seen people do that, like Paul Scholes, for instance. Um, you know, same hair colour, same similarities, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully he can play like Paul Scholes. Hopefully he can play like Paul Scholes as well. That would be um, upsetting for me personally. But um, Yeah, exactly. Great for you. But, ideal for Blues. Yeah, ideal for Blues. But I just feel like he's one of those. I met his parents quite a few times outside the ground and um, they they seem like really nice people as well. So, yeah, I reckon he's probably got a nice family and just keeps himself to himself off the pitch. And then when it comes to on the field, he's, you know, works hard at his job, like like anyone does in any normal normal norms of life. But, you know, he's not got a normal job. He, he's a footballer. Yeah, exactly. And it's it's hard to be a footballer and have social media. And I respect to anyone who has that kind of head strength to uh, to deal with the sort of, sort of uh, abuse you can get on there sometimes. Um, but yeah, no, I, I respect uh, the way Ryan Woods goes about his business um, and sounds like he's good. He's got good morals and stuff like that. And really, it kind of gives you that down to earth vibe and has has his own life. And um it's good to hear that, you know, he gives everything on the pitch and leaves it on the pitch sort of thing, um, which is always great to hear. So I suppose uh, moving on to kind of wrapping up um, the first episode of this exciting series, um, what would you, as a signing rating, 
what would you give Ryan Woods as from a scale of one to 10, uh, 10 being quality next Pele, um, one next being, <laughs> yeah. Um, one being, I, I don't know uh, who's a massive flop uh, that you can think of from the top of your head. Uh, Sido Berahino at Stoke. There you go. Um, th- no, trust me, he'd be, it wouldn't be a side of Berahino, you know, that's for sure. Um, I was going, I was having two thoughts in my mind when we would said, uh, when you said, um, get a signing rating for him, I was going to give him seven. I thought seven sounds a bit harsh, but I'll probably put a point five at the end of it because he, like I said before, the word that best describes him is solid, and 7.5 is a solid assessment for Ryan Woods. He's a good sign and he can bring something to the team, he's good on the ball, he can get the ball back and I don't know if you've been missing that in your side a lot but yeah definitely yeah but so if he, he can give you that then he's a very very solid sign and, and hopefully Blues's project maybe works out maybe better than Stokes did because I think had Stokes project worked out you'd probably still be a Stoke player by now so yeah so mm-hmm. I'd say right. um so yeah I'd say Ryan Woods would be probably a 7.5 out of 10 just solid Lovely stuff. Well, there you have it, Blues fans. 7.5 out of 10 on the sign-in rating. I I completely back that. I rate that. I think it's, um, like I've said on a previous video, I think it's smart business. And on a free as well, um, which is fantastic in itself. Um, so, yeah, no, exciting times at Blues. And I think Ryan Woods will definitely fit the mould because um, we, we have a lot of time and respect for players who give that 110% uh, on the pitch and they don't go unrecognised um, so yeah really exciting stuff and I look forward to seeing what he can bring to Blues but thank you Elliot uh, it's been an absolute pleasure having you back on the channel again and I'll probably have you back on in the season as well when we play Stoke and to be fair we play you pretty early on uh, yeah, in the August I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna be there as well so um, I'll, I'll be in the Morrisons outside the ground if anyone wants to meet me but <laughs> exactly go, go and get I, your I autographs doubt, guys I would not recommend it don't recommend it <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, so no that'd be great me and Elliot will probably be down Morrison's having a nice little nice little lunch and stuff so um, that would be good but no thank you for joining me and if you want to promote uh, Bear Pit and Delilah quickly go for it yeah so uh, make sure to check out the uh, the Bear Pit TV on they were on Facebook we're on um, Twitter and on Instagram so Instagram is the the initials of it so it's T P T, the, I'll slap TV, it on the screen for you all. TVP, <laughs> and then Twitter, it's at the Bear Pit TV, and Facebook, it's the Bear Pit TV. Delilah Debate is my brand new Stoke City podcast. We get interviews with former players, and um, we're yeah, we're in the midst of trying to maybe get like a former Blues player on who also played for Stoke. So maybe there's something that you guys can listen to there. So it's um, yeah, it's at Delilah Debate on Twitter and um, at the Delilah Debate on um, Instagram as well. So make sure you check that out. We're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, we're on Google Play. Um, we're also on Amazon as well, if anyone wants to listen to you on there. But yeah, make sure to check us out. We've got some great interviews with Gabriel Zakwani, Carl Dickinson, um, Martin Carillas, Alan Hudson, who's actually my dad's favourite player of all time. So there you go. That was, great, that was a great interview. So make sure you check them out. But yeah exciting stuff and if there's any blues players on then be sure to follow lovely stuff that's uh, great to hear so go check that out guys um but f- that's it for now and i shall hopefully see you in the next episode or whatever next video i'll bring out i've got so much content to catch up on at the moment because it's all kicking off at blues um in a good way though so uh, that's the main thing but uh thank you everyone for tuning in and we'll see you in the next one keep right on